everyone. So for this strategy, I'm going to show you how you can enhance a regular old paper activity um, through the use of technology to make it even better for your students. So we're going to make a self-checking activity. So what you're going to need is the starter file that you can download right off the blog. And right here, we can see that slides 10 through 24 create self-checking questions and answers. So I'm going to first make a copy so I don't destroy my original. Um, these are going to be task cards that we work with. And now all of the assignments that I've been showing in the video so far, the quiz, the task cards, the exit tickets, and anything we're going to show is available free in a 4.2a Teaks kit. We give that away as a sample of our kits so you can see how great they are and how much stuff is actually in them. Okay, I'm going to delete the original starter file so I don't get mixed up. And now I'm going to delete all of the slides that I'm not going to use for this activity. So I'm going to delete 1 through 9 and 16 through 17. So now all I have left are these question self-checking slides. Um, so the first thing I want to do is get the questions. So I uploaded, let's see, here it is. I used my cam scanner app on my phone to get these papers onto the computer. So I'm just gonna open it and I'm gonna use my snipping tool to grab the first question. And then I'm gonna paste it right here on the slide. Okay, so there is the first question. And then you would continue the same way to get all of the questions on the slides. If you don't know where the snipping tool is, right here in the search bar in the bottom, you can type snipping tool and it'll come up. So let's get number two. Paste number two. So you'll do that real quickly for all of the slides. Now what you're gonna do is grab your answer key and you're gonna work on making this self-checking. So you will need an image this comes with my Bitmoji, but you are welcome to change it for your Bitmoji or any other image that you like. If your students are into football, then maybe you could do um, football logos. But once you have the image, you're gonna drag it over the correct answer and you are gonna move it behind the correct answer. Make sure none of it is showing. Okay, so now it's behind the C. If you don't get it just right, you'll notice that when you move it behind, you can still see. So that's what you want to be careful of. So once you have your image behind, perfectly behind, that's it. That's all you're going to do. And you're going to repeat that for, this, for all of the questions. So let's say this correct answer was D. I'm just guessing. I'm going to press Control Shift back, get it back there. All right, and now this slide's ready to go. So once it's completely ready to go, you are gonna share it right in Google Classroom. So I'm going to Google Classroom, I'm gonna create a new assignment, and I'll name it 4.2a Task Cards. And you're gonna go into your Google Drive to, whoops, to find it. So 4.2a Task Cards, so add it there. And then remember when you're doing these interactive activities, you always want the students to have their own copy. So don't forget to make a copy for each student. That's kind of one of the most important parts. And then just click assign. When the students open the assignment from their Google Classroom, what they're gonna see is exactly this. So how they use this to be self-checking is they just solve the problem on scratch paper or whiteboard. And then when they think they know the answer, they drag the answer away and see if there is that visual feedback. So A was not right, um, but C was. It also has a little place right here for the students to interact with you. So this makes it e this makes an even better use of technology. So the students can just say, I need help with, um, if they don't understand it, that way when you're going back and looking at them, you can see their little notes and then you can give the feedback that the student needs for that. So some teachers are worried about self-checking and students cheating. And what I say is this, not everything is an assessment. And once kids start to realize that their time can just be spent learning and not necessarily proving what they have, 
um, what they know, there isn't necessarily a reason to cheat. Another way to combat this if you're worried about with your class is to let them work together in pairs. I found that when they do work together, they do talk about it. They want to you know, show each other that they know what they're talking about, and it takes away some of the temptation maybe just to, to cheat. Um, so anyways, this is a strategy that is great. And the next strategy that we're going to show you is going to um, kind of enhance an activity even more by making it super engaging and creating a board game. So stay tuned for that one.